Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is Sunday, February 9th. We are standing in front of the John Ringling, John and Mabel Ringling Mansion. Today we're going to be covering the Ringling grounds. So I want to give you a little bit of history on John Ringling and how it all got started before we start the tour. As I was researching this, I found so much information on, on John Ringling and the Ringling Brothers. Um, so I tried to make some notes with some of the more important facts. And if you're interested, take the time to check it out because there's just a lot of amazing things. So John Ringling was born in 1866. He had six brothers and one sister. He started the Ringling Brothers United Monster Show back in 1917. His family ran that show. It was kind of more like, for those of you that have seen The Greatest Showman, and it shows how Barnum started out with like a freak show type thing. So it went from being a monster show and then it grew, and in, in, in 1884, it became the Ringling Brothers Circus. At that time, they had earned enough money, and guess how much they charged to get in back then? One penny, one cent to get in, which is amazing. So anyways, um, they had grown so much that at this point they had their own train. They traveled across the country doing shows and buying artwork. John Ringling was always in the art, so uh, he traveled a lot to buy a lot of artwork. In 1905, John Ringling got married to Mabel, who he called the love of his life. So when they were traveling, they came to Florida for a visit. He was really impressed with Florida and with a lot of the land in Florida. So he started purchasing pieces of land, especially in the Sarasota area. He bought this property, which is 20 acres of property in 1911. He started building the John Ringling Bridge in 1925. In all of his purchases over the years, he bought a lot of land out on Lido Beach and Longboat Key. He wanted to be able to attach the islands to the mainland, so that's why he had the John Ringling Causeway built. It was built in uh, 1925 and was completed and opened in 1926. And then in 1927, Mr. Ringling donated it to Sarasota County. Uh, let me keep looking here. There's a few other things I want to make sure I cover. So in 1932, that's when they opened up the Ringling Museum. Now, Mrs. Ringling had died in 1929, so she never got to see the museum and a lot of the things on the ground. John Ringling died in 1936, so he did get to see, of course, the mansion and the Ringling Museum. But the Circus Museum came on the grounds later, so he wasn't here for that. In 1937, John Ringling North took over a lot of the properties and developments that the Ringlings had here in Sarasota. He's also the one that was the president of the board that kept the Ringling Circus going and was in charge of that for many, many years. Um, oh, interesting. When he died in 1936, he gave the whole property over to the state. Everything was donated to the state. Which is interesting considering there were a lot of family members. But from what I understand, he was the last of the brothers to live. He lived to be 70 years old and he was the oldest of the brothers. 
all the rest had passed before him. Uh, he didn't have any children of his own, so I guess that's why he turned everything over to the state. So just kind of a recap. Um, in 1911 is when Mr. Ringling started buying a lot of the property. 1926, the mansion was built. In 1932, the Ringling Museum opened, which we'll be visiting today. 1948, the Circus Museum opened, which we will be visiting today. They also have the old Oslo Theater here. The Oslo Theater was originally in Italy. It was dismantled and stored away. When John Ringling North learned about it, he bought it, had everything shipped here, and literally had a little section in the museum set up with this historical theater. At some point, they decided to move it out of the museum and put it on the grounds and have people come and attend plays there. And then they moved it a third time into the entrance of the visitor center. Uh, they actually have a play going on there tonight, but they only use it once in a while. We hope we're going to be able to get a shot of it for you because it's pretty cool. So with that being said, we're going to start our tour here in the mansion since it was the first thing built on the grounds. See you in there. So there was no kids of Mabel and John? No, and that he willed nothing to anyone in his family. Okay. Nothing. I know. I know. The mansion. As you're going to see, they have kept it the way it was back in the old days. They've done a lot of restoring over the years. So yeah, we're only allowed on the downstairs floor here in the mansion. Uh, we're going to take you through that and then share some of the pictures from the upstairs. This is a view of the living room. We'll get a little closer in a few minutes, but as you can see, it has all these beautiful stained glass windows looking out over the water. So yeah, that was the main door. These old chairs are pretty crazy. We are now entering the dining room in the mansion, which isn't humongous, but it certainly is large. I think uh, most of it looks bigger due to all the high ceilings. The fireplace, of course, has little sculptures on it. Everywhere you look, you're going to see beautiful art, whether it's a painting or a drawing or woodwork on furniture. Uh, you'll see a lot of beautiful art here. Yes. Yeah. This is the original elevator, and yes, it does still work. I really like it with the door on it like that. It just, I don't know, it looks classy. This is the stairwell going upstairs, which we're not allowed to go to right now. So if you want to see it, you're going to have to come and take the guided tour. Here's the living room. Of course, it has a grand piano in it. Uh, the ceiling in here is also incredible. They've kept it and restored it. Uh, have had to add a little paint here and there because it was so faded. But they tried their best to only touch things up as they need them and only as much as they need to be. As you can see, this place is so well lit up just because of all the windows and all the sunlight that comes through. So this is the ballroom. 
which again to me seems pretty small for a ballroom but for back then I'm sure it seemed like a grand ballroom love all the original furniture once again all the beautiful stained glass windows we're now entering the other side of the living room which also has all the doorways going out to the beautiful back porch here at the mansion which we will of course go out to in just a few minutes and as you're looking up stairs here, this is an outside balcony that led into Mr. Ringling's game room and also his vault where he kept all of his very expensive wine. He was definitely known as a wine connoisseur. This is another dining room here in the mansion. And I think one of my favorite parts of it is this old bird cage over here. How beautiful of a bird cage. Mostly, this was the breakfast room rather than the dining room. So, breakfast you gathered here, dinner you gathered in the main dining room. I'm so curious about the color scheme in this place. A lot of green. So now we're heading into the kitchen. In this little area here, we have some very old, from what I'm told, this is his original silverware. So we have some very old silverware platters, candlestick holders, and as we enter through here, you'll see a lot of the original china. Once again, with a lot of green. I don't know if uh, they just love the color of green <laughs> or what, but I do notice that a lot of the mansion is painted green. And I have to wonder, I'm going to have to check that out history-wise. Did they repaint it a new color or did they try to keep it close to the colors it was back in the old days. That's something we'll have to ask. And here, of course, is the very large kitchen that I'm sure they had a lot of meals at their parties and I'm sure there was a lot of work done in this kitchen. So these are some of the pictures from the upstairs here in the mansion where we won't be going today. So here we are going out to the back patio. As you're going to see, it's just beautiful out here. And the balconies. I love the balconies. The artwork on the balconies is amazing as everything else. Looking at this incredible place. You look at the tile and it's very cool as well. And once again, you have to wonder, is this original? I know they try to keep things exactly the way they are. But I wonder how many times they've had to replace this or is this the original? Another question I'll have to ask. And of course, here's their program. Pretty beautiful boat ramp, not like most boat ramps. And of course, he had a beautiful view of the intercoastal.
look at these windows. Of course, those are the upstairs windows that we didn't see, but can you imagine how nice and lit up this whole place was inside from the sun? But yet the stained glass probably also helped like tinting so that it wasn't so intense heat coming in through all these windows. So, you've seen a lot of the mansion. If you'd like to tour the whole thing, learn more about it, come to the John Ringling Museum grounds and have a great time visiting. So we're going to leave the mansion now and we're going to walk all the way up to the Ringling Museum. I say all the way up because it is a good walk. Uh, as I said, these grounds are a 20 mile acres or 20 acres of land here. So we have a little walk to go up to the museum. Uh, I think we'll probably stop and look at the secret garden on the way. So we are now entering what's known as the secret garden. The garden was started in 1927. Mabel Ringling loved butterflies. So when she built this garden, she made sure it had all the plants that were needed for butterflies from the time that they were born until they grew. Um, I don't know a lot about plants, but evidently she found out what the butterflies would need. If you go to the back of the garden, this is where John and Mabel Ringling are buried, along with John's sister, Ida. So here we are at the burial site for John and Mabel Ringling and his sister, Ida. Originally, Mr. Ringling and Mabel were buried in New York, but they ended up transferring them here that they love so much that they now lie. So here in the back of the secret garden, we have the burial places for John Ringling, Mabel Ringling, and John Ringling's only sister, Ida. Originally, Mr. Ringling and Mabel were buried in New York, but they were, I want, in 91 they were moved to here in Sarasota on their beautiful grounds. I also wanted to share with you, this is out in front of the mansion, their swimming pool. Um, obviously, they didn't want it on the back. So they built it here in the front of the mansion. So, along with all the obvious art and beauty on the grounds, there's also a few hidden treasures around here. I'm not going to tell you exactly where this item is, but I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit, but then you'll have to find it when you come to the grounds. Yes, we have one of the beautiful sculptures that are on the grounds has literally been engulfed with this tree. So you really have to look to find it because it blends in like natural color. So we are now going to enter in the back of the museum and work our way up and around. 
And we're now entering the first gallery. You're going to see the museum has many rooms with many beautiful paintings. And the really cool thing is they have so many, they can't put them all up at one time. So a lot of them are in storage. And what they'll do is, I don't know if it's every few months, every six months, but what they'll do is swap out some, put new ones in, and store them for a while. In this gallery, you will see that we have photography. And when you come, make sure you really take the time to stop and check them out. Obviously, I've been here many times. So I'm just trying to give you an overall view of the place. Another gallery with photography. Something else you will notice in a lot of the paintings, uh, Mr. Ringley was a religious man, and a lot of the paintings that he collected definitely had angels and I think a lot of angels um, and other religious items within the, the pictures. As you can see, these are a little bit larger. Definitely not the largest work in here, but definitely some large pictures. This is one of the larger rooms in the museum. As you can see, it houses very large pictures and some sculptures.
I really like the color in this room. A lot of beautiful old lockets. And yes, this would be the largest room with the largest paintings. Look around the top of the room, you'll see a lot of art and the sculpturing. So we entered through the back of the museum and so I wanted to bring you out to the front so you could see it as well because it's pretty awesome. We're going to go in and we're going to go straight through to the courtyard. Okay, so we went straight through. Now we're out in the courtyard here at the museum. We just took you through this whole right wing of the museum. There's also a left wing that we're not going to take you through. If you want to see it, you're going to have to come to the Ringley Museum. So anyways, out here in the courtyard, you'll see there's some of the most beautiful sculptures that you'll ever see lined up all around the courtyard on the top of the roof are many different sculptures. And then of course you have the sculpture of David right in the center of the courtyard. As you can see, it's being set up today. Um, you are allowed to have weddings here at the museum grounds. So someone's getting married here today and they're setting up for it right now. So now you've seen the parts of the museum we're gonna show you today. We're gonna head out of here and head over to the circus museum on the grounds. So now we're going into the Circus Museum. The Circus Museum opened in 1948. Mr. Tibble created all the miniature pieces you'll see in this museum. He hand painted everything, he crafted everything. Um, it's amazing what he did. You're really going to enjoy this part. Uh, another little piece of information. In 1951, they filmed part of the movie, The uh, Greatest Show on Earth, which is what the Ringling Brothers, that was the name of their circus. When they merged with the Bar Barman Bailey Circus, um, they became the John Ringling and Bar Barnum Circus. And... Uh, so a lot of the things that you see in here are all replicas of the old circus, of the trains they use, everything. And so, as I was saying, they use the grounds and some of the circus items from the grounds in the movie when they filmed The Greatest Show on Earth. Charleston Heston was the main character in that movie. <laughs> And they're still not. So there were many circuses in the old days, which is why you're going to see the names of different circuses on the wall here. In the beginning, John Ringling Circus was just like everybody else. I think the big change happened when they merged the Ringling Brothers 
and the Barnum and Bailey shows, which is what this poster is about here. Once they merged them, that's when they started calling it the greatest show on earth. And from what I understand, it had more acts and more animals than any of the circuses did. And literally, um, as they would travel the country, they were always looking for new acts to put into the circus. And uh, once again, from what I understand, they found a lot of their acts in Europe. And they would bring them here to the States. And they would join the circus. So here is Mr. Tibbles, uh, Howard Tibbles, who's the man I was telling you that created this miniature gallery that's going to totally amaze you. It's very fitting that the exhibit starts with the train, since the train is what took them everywhere. The circus had over 1,300 workers and performers. And over 800 animals. This is a really cool part of the exhibit. Can you imagine what it was like back then when the circus train would come rolling into town and everyone in the town would go running down to the train depot to see the circus folks getting off the train and then of course they would all get off and they would have a parade and go through town to give everybody a little glimpse of what the acts were going to be that they could see when they came to the circus. And I want you to remember, everything in here is hand done. As you can see, it's very busy here today. Check out some of these old cars. Of course, in the center of everything, you have the big circus top. And that's what it looked like. It wasn't in a building. It was in a huge tent. As you can see, just like the fairs you go to today, they always had the uh, sideshows. And the sideshows were usually things like the tallest person in the world, the fattest person in the world, the bearded lady, uh, the sword swallower, just all kinds of different crazy things. And that's originally how Mr. Ringling started. That's why it was called the Monster Circus, because it was all kinds of sideshow attractions. Yeah, 
Look at all the elephants in the back of the tent. Yeah. So that was tent number one. Tent number one is where you'd enter, and it's where your side shows were. And then when you moved on to tent number two, that's where you'd see all of your acts. <laughs> A lot of things happening at once in the circus. <laughs> Can you imagine the amount of work it took just alone to get the tent set up, all the stakes that it took to get it up? Of course, knowing that they might be dealing with bad weather, um, but knowing that they had these tents secure and that nobody was going to get hurt. A lot of this stuff just amazes me, the work it must have taken him. I'll have to look at the sign when we go back out front. I wonder how long it took him to complete this exhibit. I would imagine they probably started with a small part of it and then he just kept working on it and adding on and adding on. But I will take a look at that just to see. So as Mr. Tibbles was doing all this incredible work, after about 20 years, he realized that he needed help or it was going to take forever. So they spent probably close to 50 years making everything that you saw in there today. So this was called the band wagon. And this is the wagon that would obviously be in the parades and was used for that. And the band would be playing to create attention. But Mr. Ringling also used this to travel around in the town and create a lot of talk about the circus. And this is the last room in here. And this is more like a hands-on room. It gives people and kids the chance to do some of the stuff that was in the circus. So without a doubt, if you bring your kids, make sure you bring them into this section of the circus area. So we are now in the Welcome Center of the John Ringling Museum. We have a museum store in here, of course. And then over to the right, we have the check-in counter where you go and get your tickets to do the different activities there are to do on the museum grounds. Next to that, we have the Ringling Grill Room where you can get some good chow. And from there, you can also access the... Uh, Oslo Theater. So we'll give you a little peek at that. So here we go. This is the Oslo Theater. And I don't believe this is the original location, but I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, it looks like a small theater, but I bet it probably holds a couple hundred in here. And it's so cool because it's a classical 
theater. And uh, I love the, the work on the walls and it just has that old classical look to it. So that's the finish of today's tour of the John Ringling and Mabel Ringling grounds. We got a little look at the museum. We got a little look at the um, little look at the circus. Now there are two other um, things that you can see here that I didn't take you to, but you're going to have to come and find those yourself. I hope you enjoyed today's video. For all you art lovers out there, I'm sure you're going to love it. If you like the video, please take the time to go back and like, subscribe, share if you think there's someone that would like to see it. Thanks a lot, and I will see you next Sunday.